Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 5th, coming up on 9.30 a.m. here. You can see our uh, next big weather maker here spinning out of the Pacific. This is a much warmer storm. We've got a lot of warm air south of this warm front that it's spawning across the Pacific Northwest. Much colder air bottled up over BC and some of the interior portions of western Washington, eastern portions of the states. And this is going to bring an atmospheric river uh, event for western Washington and western Oregon also. So we're going to have to take a look at that. There's some flooding potential with this coming up. The ground is very saturated. When snow melts, it tends to saturate the ground better than just typical rain that tends to run off a bit more. The snow melts slowly and it seeps into the ground and it saturates it very well. So let's just go ahead and take a look at watches uh, warnings and advisories right now you can see all the Washington Cascades in our winter storm warning winter storm warning all through most of eastern Washington including all of I-90 all the way to Montana so heads up there winter weather advisories elsewhere uh, Oregon Cascades uh, east slopes northern portions and winter weather advisories for the rest of the Oregon Cascades you can see that the west portions of the state mainly get a break, especially for Oregon here. There's a chance for some snow mixing in here with Seattle initially with this warm front moving up over the region. Whatcom County winter storm warning. Uh, two to six inches expected. We'll take a look at some of the model runs here and see if that's trending up or down. Uh, San Juan County that a winter storm watch up yesterday. It's been set as a winter weather advisory up to three inches. Some of the eastern portions of the Puget Sound up to three inches. Take a look at the winter weather advisor there. Um, yeah, San Juan Island, Lopez Island, Eatonville, Buckley, Snoqualmie, Duval, Gold Bar, Arlington. So heads up there. And it's going to get close to Seattle with some accumulating snow. It looked like on some of the high resolution models. We'll take a look at that as well. Winter storm warning for the Cascades above 1500 feet, 12 to 28 inches. Uh, some gusty winds possible too. Be very careful traveling over the passes, especially you're not going to get any relief as you get into eastern Washington. You know, you normally get down towards Ellensburg by Clee Ellum and you start breaking out of that snow, but it's not going to happen uh, once you start traveling this evening into Thursday. You can see some of this three to six inches and it looks like some of the models are painting higher amounts on the east slopes over here. Uh, yeah, it's <clears throat> 10 to 20 inches there. It looked like uh, Ellensburg was like looking like over a foot on the European model. So we, be careful when you're traveling. There might not be much relief if you're heading east on I-90 once you get out of the Cascades. So let's go ahead and take a look at the European model and just kind of look at temperatures, what they're trending right now. You can see how Bellingham starts to fall below the freezing mark here as we go into the day today, briefly warms up. And then as the warm front marches up, you see it drop back below freezing. And that's the danger time for them. The snow is gonna be accumulating up there. And it's gonna be, you know, Seattle gets down to 34 there. If we get enough, if we get a heavy enough precipitation band with this warm front and those east winds kick in just enough, get some evaporative cooling, you could see a little bit of snowfall all the way down to the Seattle Metro. It's kind of a long shot. And some of these easterly portions too could be getting, you know, set up to three inches. So we got to watch for that. Look at Eastern Washington, very cold, mid twenties, teens going on here. So it's really going to be a, a, a snowy situation over there. Check out the Northeast Oregon uh, upper elevations too, very cold. And for the most part, the Willamette Valley should stay pretty warm here. Some of the coastal range might get some snow mixed in. I saw the models targeting some of Kitsap Peninsula. Look at that, freezing. Black Hills, west of Oregon, you're gonna be just below freezing. Some of this easterly slope might run into the Olympic Mountains here and cause some upslope precipitation, which just adds to that lift and taps some more of that cold air. And it can bring some accumulating snowfalls over there in the Kitsap Peninsula. So taking a look here at the winds, let's see here. So this is 10 o'clock. And we're already kind of the east. You can see on our weather station there, we're getting east wind here all the way out to the sound. So this is happening a little bit in advance. Temperature still 36, dew point 35. So not much help with evaporative cooling under those conditions. We'd need the dew point to be quite a bit lower. So this east wind is gonna to have to kick in a bit and bring some drier air in if we're gonna get that evaporative cooling all the way down to uh, sea level here in the Seattle Metro. But you can see here at 10 a.m. the Fraser River uh, Valley winds going. There's some southerlies coming up through the sound, all the way up towards uh, Anacortes there. But you can see there's some reinforcing cold air coming down to eastern Washington. That's why they're gonna stay plenty cold during this. And here we go. 
check out these east winds this is at 7 p.m tonight we've got east winds all the way through the gorge at this point so you know some of these uh, higher elevations just outside the gorge might be getting some snowfall with this too and check out these east pure east winds out of seattle coming through the stampede gap here and then you see the southerlies come in there and that happens just after midnight there and then we're going to really warm start to warm up through the puget sound probably a messy transition coming up through bellingham we'll look at some of the high resolution models and see how that's going to evolve here in a second Let's look at some snow totals. This is the European Kuchera. Shows a little bit of accumulating snow for Seattle. It's not been doing that well when temperatures are marginal though, so I, that, that may be an error right there. But the highlight of this is these Bellingham totals are probably accurate and some of the higher elevations in the eastern por uh, portions of uh, the Puget Sound lowlands there could be getting a couple inches of snow. Same with the San Juans there. And look at these big totals, Ellensburg 15 inches on the European model there. And this is all this all falls by Thursday morning. So if you're traveling on I-90, I mean, this is gonna be a, a big snow event for a lot of Eastern Washington here. And look at the totals in the Cascades. I mean, this is just a very amazing snowpack is building for the Cascades. Gonna be good for next summer, especially if you get pretty hot. But anyway, let's look here. This is the wrap model. You can see a little bit of precip for Seattle, frozen precip. And check this out, down south of, towards Olympia, showing a little bit of accumulating snowfall. Kitsap Peninsula with those east winds coming through there. You could get a little bit of upslope play on some of these, on some of the terrain over there. Bellingham, 3.5 inches there. A little bit in San Juan County. And again, Eastern Washington, look at this. Some big snowfall totals showing up there. Northeast Oregon as well, some of the portions of the Oregon Cascades. And look at Monta Western Montana and Idaho. These higher terrains are just gonna get absolutely plastered with snow. You know, a huge snowmaker for a lot of these regions. The British Columbia Mountains up there. Uh, some of the southern portions of BC is gonna get some decent snowfall amounts out of this. So really an intense winter storm anywhere outside of the Puget Sound in north, northeast. Here is a, the GFS. You can see the low pressure out here over the ocean and you see the much warmer air here and you see it divided by this very strong warm front and this very cold Arctic air locked up over British Columbia here. And you'll see into Eastern Washington and the Puget Sound is just kind of on the border of that stuff there. And we put this into motion. You see that low move towards the Queen Charlotte's then down towards Vancouver Island and fill and a new one takes its place and feeds into the Oregon coast. Now that's gonna prolong precipitation rates along Western Washington, Oregon into the Cascades. And we'll take a look at that too. You have guys heard of the term atmospheric river. So that is what's coming for, uh, especially Western portions of the states. Here's the NAM snow totals. Look at Bellingham, six inches. And the NAM's been doing pretty good recently. It shows a little bit for Seattle. So that's why I'm kind of, I'm a little bit wondering if we're gonna, we might see a little bit of wintry mix down here in Seattle. Look at Black Hills Olympia. Kitsap Peninsula, heads up. You guys might be getting some snow uh, this evening and on into tonight. And again, the big snows just pile up over here. And sorry, this is the Her, guys. This is the Her. So six inches Bellingham. And look at Eastern Washington, as far out as the Her goes there, you know, the snow total is building up pretty good. This is the NAM 3KM. You can see Bellingham with almost four inches. It's showing Seattle, or just outside of Seattle getting an inch of snow there. So, and area of Snohomish County northwards might be getting, you know, there, it might be a little surprise here too and how much snowfall we get. Again, Kitsap Peninsula, Black Hills west of Olympia, some of the higher terrain down through Southwest Washington. And again, Eastern Washington, Northeast Oregon and Idaho, Montana, West Slopes, big snowfall totals coming. So let's take a look. When I say atmospheric river, what are we talking about? What are we dealing with here? So, first of all, I'm going to show you the chart here. This is uh, category one through five on atmospheric rivers. Right now, when we get to this point of the year, atmospheric rivers are very rarely beneficial. So, you know, you, at this point of the year, we're just looking at flooding and potentially, you know, you get flooding damage and you get big issues with an atmospheric river at this time of year. Earlier in the season, after we're coming out of a dry summer, it's it's much more beneficial, but I've heard some talk about a Cat 3 atmospheric river. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is 
the integrated vapor transport. And this is the GFS. You can see this atmospheric river here, north of Hawaii, just reaching up and it's reaching towards Oregon here. And notice how that pivots and just bullseyes the Washington coast and North Oregon coast there. And it slides in. And we're seeing some totals over 800. And if we go back to that, you can see if you get 24 hours, 800, you get to strong, that's category three. So that starts to become hazardous at that point. And you'll see that goes on for a while and doesn't clear out of there until that low, that wave moves through the Oregon coast. And then we get a break after that, according to the GFS anyway. But check this out. Look at some of these 24 hour precip totals coming through Southwest Washington. These are intense. Look, 5.4 inches through some of the areas of the Cascade, Central, Southwest Washington, up towards Seattle, looking for potentially two inches of rain in a 24 hour period. We have very saturated soils. Like I said earlier, snowfall tends to saturate the soils better than typical rainfall. So this could be a serious situation for a lot of areas. Southwest slopes of the Olympics, Washington coast, the Southwest Washington upper elevations, Cascades. And really there could be some urban flooding uh, potential with this too. So this is something we've really got to watch. Those are some hefty totals there. Looking at the European here too, let's see what it says as far as precipitable water here. You see that stretching towards the Washington, Oregon coast. And look at that, just bullseyes the Washington, North Oregon coast and just hangs out there for quite a period of time there. Now we're into Friday early morning before it finally kicks out. So we really need to watch that system as it comes in. But yeah, you, um, areas north of Seattle, more favored, East Puget Sound Lowlands, Kitsap Peninsula, Black Hills, um, definitely more favored for snowfall. And of course, Whatcom County, San Juan County and Southern BC there. You know, stay tuned to your local forecast because you're definitely in a more favored area. And if you're going to Eastern Washington today, heads up. There's got to be no relief starting this evening when this snow starts falling um, on I-90 all the way into Montana. So be careful there. And yeah, so that is what's going on today. I might do another video later on today and I might go look at some of the weather around the area. And I... And as we get closer to this flooding, I might go out and actually cover it depending on what areas are going to be susceptible. So thanks for stopping by, you guys, and I will talk to you guys later. Check for Twitter, back for uh, up-to-the-minute updates, and I will see you guys later.